Post the successful hosting of the G20 Leadership Summit in New Delhi and of course the New Delhi Declaration which had the consensus of all the participating nations across the 80 plus paragraphs including the ones on geopolitics specifically on the Ukraine war. There are many questions that are being asked. It's questions around President Xi Jinping, his absence, perhaps the diminishing stature of China and its ability to perhaps impose itself and uh, it having to uh, bow to the will of the larger grouping of nations. India, on the other hand, has very clearly maintained that on multilateral fora, China has always been cooperative. Clearly, in the presidency briefing, it was outlined that China was on board all the paragraphs that have been stated, and especially not just on the Ukraine war. That was China backing Russia. Russia, the moment Sergei Lavrov uh, sources are telling News 18, that uh, the Russians said, we trust India. And the moment the word Russia was not meant mentioned in any of the paragraphs, Russia was all right with the wording. The compromise actually came from the Western nations who were perhaps insisting on Russia being mentioned, but Ukraine was called a war, not a conflict or a military operation as the position was held by China and Russia, but it was called a war. And that's where perhaps the consensus was built with the help of some of the Sherpas of the emerging nations, including South Africa, Indonesia uh, and Saudi Arabia, who came into play and uh, played a vital role. Uh, in trying to convince uh, Russia, China and of course the West in agreeing to the construct of the paragraph. The focus, ladies and gentlemen, is where uh, sociologists like Professor Salvatore Babunez believe that China has literally thrown Pakistan under the bus with the wording of the paragraphs on terrorism and India seems to have had its way. Now, why would China relent is one question, especially in the past when it has blocked the likes of Masood Azhar's uh, uh, being uh, uh, designated a terrorist by the UN uh, uh, and uh, they have used their veto power to time and again shield uh, terrorists operating in Pakistan or even terrorist outfits operating out of Pakistan who are inimical to India. In this case, it looks like an overall holistic perspective about terrorism has been also agreed upon because China has uh, very seriously considered and has interests about the crackdown on the ETIM. Now, ETIM operating out of uh, the of, out of Afghanistan, Pakistani soil, and getting the patronage of the Taliban and some of the other forces is something which is not going down very very well with the Chinese. So somewhere is this a subtle message for them to crack down their irritancy over the fact that the CPEC project hasn't moved further. All of these aspects may be the reason why China has decided somewhere to take a unanimous position vis-a-vis -vis terrorism and also respecting sovereignty of nations and their territories. But will China walk the walk? That's the big question. China, on the other hand, although seemingly isolated, is growingly engaging with a lot of other nations. Their own BRI celebrating 10 years of the BRI initiative. They are uh, going ahead and expecting nearly 100 nations to attend. Even if 70, 80 nations attend, not all 100 attend and some of them abstain or they are veering away, a large part of the world still depends on China for their trade. Uh, there is open engagement by the Americans with the Chinese. But somewhere one gets to understand that Xi Jinping is going to chart his own course. China has decided that they are going to walk their own path uh, in trying to create a new world order. Whether that works or not, we'll have to wait and watch. But at multilateral fora, it looks like China is not going to be a roadblock. India maintains it has never been a roadblock. Despite the border tensions that we have on multilateral fora, China has always cooperated.